This is the most advanced presidential helicopter ever made, known as the VH-92A. It almost died on arrival. After nearly 20 years of delays, setbacks, and cost overruns, this aircraft is finally getting off the ground. Well, almost getting off the ground. Due to certain limitations, this helicopter can't actually perform one of its most critical functions yet, which begs the question of whether this bird's advanced features and cool new tricks can offset this fatal flaw. As the president and his family boarded Air Force One on a hot summer day in August 2024, they may not have realized that they would soon be making history. That day, Biden was due to be a keynote speaker at the Democratic National Convention in Chicago. Due to the huge distance, he would first fly to Chicago O'Hare Airport. Once safely on the ground, he and his entourage would then embark on Marine One, the designated helicopter to ferry the president. But this was no normal helicopter. Typically, the president has ridden either a VH-3D Sea King for longer trips or a VH-60N Whitehawk for shorter trips. However, despite being incredibly advanced and reliable for their time, these aircraft are long past their service life. Having entered into the presidential fleet in the 1970s and 80s, these helicopters are long overdue for the old Yeller treatment. But the problem has been with what would replace them. When the Department of Defense began looking for a new Marine One in 2005, little did it know that the cost and complexity of this project would soon dwarf initial estimates. By 2008, the estimated costs had already doubled, and this was before ideas had even left the drawing board. Because of this, the DOD scrapped the project in 2009, but soon looked to revive it in 2012. Initially, there were several contenders, but they soon bowed out to Sikorsky's superior design based on its wildly successful S-92. From 2012 to 2021, the Navy and Marine Corps struggled to get the VH-92 to meet the huge laundry list of requirements the White House Military Office set forth. After entering full-scale production that year, a fleet of 23 helicopters were built, two of which were dedicated to testing and developing new gear. Despite entering service, the VH-92 had yet to carry the president on official duties until the Democratic National Convention. After landing at Chicago O'Hare, the president and his family soon boarded a VH-92 for the first time, where they had made a short trip to Soldier Field before riding to the convention. Although the Biden's first flight was largely symbolic, it represents the culmination of nearly 20 years of effort. But despite this historic milestone, there is still one problem dogging the program that could down the program for good. However, this would be difficult considering the amazing technology and hidden secrets on this aircraft that would make it hard to replace. When first looking at the VH-92, you would easily mistake it for its civilian cousin, the Sikorsky S-92. That's because the VH-92 is basically a militarized version of this iconic aircraft. Because of this, the VH-92 is the biggest Marine One ever put into service. Stretching from its tail to its nose, the VH-92 is 56 feet long, while its body is just over 17 feet wide. This wide frame can accommodate a 6 foot by 6 foot main cabin, capable of ferrying 14 passengers. The president would need so many passengers because he always travels with a huge entourage, including secret service agents and a military officer holding the nuclear football. This doesn't even mention dignitaries and other VIP guests he may bring along. Because of this, the president needs a big cabin to fit all of these potential bodies. Another reason the aircraft is so large is to accommodate its huge propulsion plant and fuel tanks. Powering this beast are two General Electric turboshaft engines, each putting out an impressive 2,520 shaft horsepower. With so much power behind it, the VH-92 can reach speeds of up to 190 miles per hour, despite weighing in at 26,500 pounds fully loaded. There are a few reasons why the aircraft weighs so much. Firstly, it has several massive fuel tanks that increase the aircraft's range to a whopping 620 miles, which means the helicopter can fly from Washington, D.C. all the way to Chicago in one go. 
But these fuel tanks are not special just because they're so big. They're also crash-resistant and bulletproof. In a worst-case scenario, if the aircraft went down, the fuel tanks exploding on impact would almost certainly mean the end for all passengers. However, Sikorsky expertly designed these fuel tanks so they would not explode on impact. But that's not the only safety feature on board. To protect against incoming missiles from manned portable launchers and anti-air defenses, Marine One comes standard with multiple flare and chaff launchers along its hull. These countermeasures are essentially trying to trick the seeker on incoming missiles by emitting light or heat, respectively, to fool the threat. But as missile technology has advanced over the years to defeat these legacy countermeasures, newer ones have to be engineered. That is why Marine One has the latest and greatest one, called a Directed Infrared Countermeasure, or DIRCOM, which is the latest in air defense technology, correcting the limitations of flares and chaff. But what is it exactly? The principle behind DIRCOM is relatively simple. It consists of a specially designed laser meant to trick the infrared seekers common on most manned portable missiles. Think of it like trying to get a cat to chase a laser pointer, only the laser pointer is mounted on a helicopter. One of the main benefits of DIRCOM over chaff and flares is the unlimited ammo. With the ability to quickly engage multiple threats at the same time, DIRCOM ensures that the president can be protected from a multi-threat, multi-axis attack common on today's battlefields. But this countermeasure isn't the only thing that makes the VH-92 stand out. Arguably, its next best feature is its communication suite. Being more than just a presidential Uber, the VH-92 is essentially a mobile radio shack, bristling with antenna for satellite communications, VHF, UHF, and HF frequencies, the president has a literal smorgasbord of options to keep him securely connected to military assets across the globe. But that isn't the craziest part about it. In fact, the president could theoretically launch a nuclear strike while simultaneously posting memes about World War III on Facebook thanks to the onboard Wi-Fi. But this is no ordinary computer network. Due to enhanced security measures, both the encrypted and unencrypted networks are hardened against any type of possible cyber attack. And this isn't even all these networks can do. While the exact ways Sikorsky has modified the aircraft are unclear, we do know that the company has made the helicopter impenetrable to even an electromagnetic pulse, or EMP, strike. Essentially, an EMP sends a huge amount of electrical energy into the air to overload a system's capacity to handle it, thereby frying it. The VH-92's ability to withstand a direct EMP blast makes it the only publicly confirmed helicopter in the world with this capability. And the best part about that is that it does all of this in style. As part of the conversion process from a civilian S-92 into a military VH-92, Sikorsky builds the airframe in its plant in Pennsylvania before shipping it to its main headquarters in Connecticut. Here, the civilian parts are ripped out and replaced with customized ones before being sent off to New York to install the sensors, countermeasures, communications equipment, and other classified technology. When the aircraft is in Connecticut, Part of the conversion process is to install what is known as the Presidential Suite. The Presidential Suite is basically just the interior cabin customized for diplomatic purposes. After all, with the amount of high rollers riding high in the VH-92, things like suede seats and a roomy interior are a must, and this is on top of the advanced sound dampening features. The White House cares about making the VH-92 as quiet as possible for several reasons. Firstly, it makes the aircraft stealthy and less easily detected from a distance, thwarting potential attackers. However, arguably, the more important reason is that the president can converse with people on board the helicopter and on the ground with little background noise. Basically, the U.S. president is just like any other major businessman, except his product is selling democracy. He needs a tool like the VH-92 that has everything he could want at his fingertips to make his business successful and advertise his brand. 
But you don't have to be elected the leader of the free world with access to something like the VH92 to showcase your business. If you're an entrepreneur or business owner, you know that having a website is crucial to your success. But what if I told you there's a way to create a stunning, professional website without spending a dime? That's where today's sponsor, Odoo, comes in. Odoo is an all-in-one business management software that offers a range of applications for entrepreneurs, including a powerful website builder. And the best part about it, besides being super easy to use, is that your first application is free for life. This means no matter how long the site is set up, you'll get unlimited hosting and support. Odoo will even throw in a custom domain name for free for the first year. Creating your website with Odoo is incredibly simple. With their intuitive website configurator, you can build a modern, professional website in just a few clicks. Define your goals, choose your colors or logo, add the pages you need, and pick your theme. You can even use their brand new ChatGPT copyright integration to further enhance your website. No technical skills required. Just drag and drop, and you'll have a fully functional, gorgeously designed website in minutes. So if you're ready to take your business to the next level, head over to odoo.com and start building your free website today. And now, let's dive into what could mean the end of the VH92 for good. Though the VH92 is an absolute unit of a helicopter, it suffers from a fatal flaw that could have catastrophic consequences for the president and the nation. One of the best benefits of the president using Marine One is the mobility it offers. When needing to go somewhere in the DC region quickly, instead of taking a long motorcade or taking Air Force One, which may be impractical considering the distance, the president has a helicopter on standby. Situated on the south lawn of the White House, this patch of grass is the pickup point for the president whenever he needs to catch a ride on Marine One. And though this has been the norm for generations, it may no longer be so because of a fatal flaw with the design. First discovered during a test flight in 2018, the VH-92 has a tendency to destroy grass when landing. This is due to the aircraft's powerful rotor wash, the wing that comes down when making a landing, and the exhaust from its engines and auxiliary power unit. Because of this, the military has so far banned the VH-92 from taking off or landing on the South Lawn due to the extensive damage it would cause, which is unacceptable for something as prominent as this area. And while it may seem like an inconvenience, the fact that the President cannot take Marine One from the White House has actually strategic concerns. Being able to ferry the President to safety or time-sensitive appointments in a hurry is a must. Forcing the president to take slower means of transportation in an emergency can literally be deadly, depending on the situation. Because of this, the military has mandated Sikorsky, Navy, and Marine leadership to find a solution before retiring the older Marine One fleet. One of the first proposed solutions was to change the design of the VH-92's rotor. It was theorized that it was too powerful, and adjustments could be made to minimize rotor wash without compromising performance characteristics. However, these efforts were ultimately fruitless, as it was too far in the development process to change the rotor without setting the program back years. The next solution was to change the way Marine pilots came in for a landing. By adjusting the approach altitude to be slightly higher than before, this added distance could dissipate some of the rotor wash energy before it hit the ground. Although this idea helped solve a lot of the damage from the rotor wash problem, it did little to change how the engine exhaust could affect the lawn. To protect the lawn against the intense heat, one of the first solutions was to try and redirect the exhaust. While this was easier to do with the auxiliary power unit, which Sikorsky did successfully, the same could not be done for the main engine exhausts. As a sort of Hail Mary, the DoD suggested placing specially designed mats on the lawn whenever the VH-92 takes off or lands at the White House. However, due to aesthetic concerns, this was shot down. As of the making of this video, there are currently no publicly available solutions for how the VH-92 can land at the White House without damaging the lawn. Until that happens, the aircraft cannot pick up or drop off the president here, 
which is one of the main reasons why the legacy Sea Kings and Whitehawks are still in service. But there is a solution. Well, maybe if the aviation industry can somehow turn around the most accident-prone aircraft into the president's personal ride. So, if these two older aircraft are going to be retired and the VH-92 cannot land at the White House, what other potential options does the Marine Corps have to provide to the president? The V-22 Osprey is arguably one of America's most iconic aircraft. With its unique tilt-rotor design, the Osprey can take off like a helicopter and then transform into a fixed-wing turboprop airplane. While this sounds pretty cool, and it certainly is, but what isn't very cash money is the Osprey's safety record. Because of the incredibly large amount of engineering that goes into the Osprey, the system is extremely complicated and difficult to fly. Due to both of these factors, the Osprey has been involved in dozens of deadly accidents since its inception, with the most recent potentially spelling the end of the Osprey program. In December 2023, an Osprey carrying eight Air Force Special Forces troops crashed off the coast of Japan during a routine training mission. During the investigation, it was discovered that the crash was the result of a known technical failure. The clutch engaged when it was not supposed to. The resulting over-torque caused the pilot to lose control and could even cause a catastrophic engine failure. Because of these issues, the Department of Defense grounded the whole fleet of Ospreys immediately following the accident. Only in recent months have some limited flights resumed. Due to the Osprey's horrendous safety record, the president is forbidden from riding inside it. Although Marine One personnel are permitted to travel in the roughly 10 or so Ospreys in the Marine One squadron, none of them can carry out their mission of transporting the president. So. With no solution yet for the VH-92 issues, the retirement of legacy aircraft, and the grounding of the Osprey, what does the future of Marine One look like? With the Osprey being totally out of the count for the foreseeable future, that just leaves the current fleet of aircraft. As Marine pilots begin integrating each new VH-92 into service, it is anticipated that each new one will lead to the retirement of a legacy helicopter. However, with no solution in sight for damaging the South Lawn, it is highly likely that the President will ride the VH-92 only on trips outside DC until a solution is found. Bye for now!